Poppy and the Overactive Amygdala, created by Holly Pravon and Eric Pravon. Hi, my name is Poppy, and I look forward to getting to know you better. First off, I'm a pretty awesome kid. I love meeting new people and making new friends. OMG, you're my best friend forever. What is your name? I'm also a great swimmer. Cannonball! I love arts and crafts and storytelling. Reading is one of my favorite hobbies. And there's something else you should know. It's about me and my brain. Flip the page for some cool science-y stuff that my mom helped me with. She's pretty great. The brain has some pretty amazing stuff in it. I'm going to tell you about two parts that affect me. The first is the prefrontal cortex. It's located in the frontal lobe here. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for most of our very human traits, as it is the most evolved part of our brain, including logic and complex thinking, planning and decision making, attention, judgment, time perception, impulse control, and social behavior. The second part of the brain I'd like to tell you about is the amygdala. It's an itty bitty tiny thing way down deep inside the brain. The amygdala, in contrast, is the prehistoric reptilian brain, where many of our survival instincts reside. It is rigid and compulsive, including fear conditioning, emotional learning, memory, behavior, libido. Let's talk a bit more about the amygdala, as our relationship is a bit more, well, complicated. We are going to talk lots about the amygdala. The amygdala is part of the limbic system and is the area of the brain where emotions come from. It's also the region of the brain where the senses are located. It's fair to say, dysfunction in this area would have an effect on your sensory needs. Also, the amygdala is responsible for the fight or flight response. When a person senses danger, the amygdala sends a signal to release adrenaline, so your body readies itself to fight or flight or run away. Pay attention, you'll need this for later. Now remember that itty bitty amygdala? Well, instead of turning on when needed, mine is always on. That means my brain is constantly signaling that there is danger, danger, danger. Adrenaline is in my body all the time. They call this chronic irritability in the brain field. It means that I am always on alert, ready to fly into action at the slightest sign of danger. While you might not run into many bears in your hometown, there are many other things that can stimulate this fight-or-flight response in everyday life. Being put on the spot. Timmy, can you tell me the square root of 783? Facing a fear? A near miss? For most people, this is a good thing. It keeps them safe. It turns on when needed so you can divert from danger. When the neurotypical normal or typical, brain is stimulated with the fight or flight response, several things start to happen. The amygdala is switched on and sends a signal for the release of adrenaline. Eyes glass over, pupils dilate, decreased blood flow to the prefrontal cortex, racing thoughts, jaw clenches, sweaty palms, heart speeds up, digestion stops, lungs take quick short breaths, Muscles receive more blood and tense up, and trembling muscles. The body is now ready for action, to run or to fight. Remember when I said I was always on alert? It also means that when my brain gets stressed, it gets really stressed. Not my brain. This one is more like it. The butterfly is going to sting me. Neurotypical brains don't get stressed to the point of fight or flight very often. My brain, on the other hand, gets stimulated many times a day. Things that signal danger to my hyper-alert brain might not seem dangerous to other people, but for me, my oversensitive amygdala can't tell the difference. Recess is over in five minutes. Put down your pencil. That's not the correct answer. You're out. Brush your hair. Time for bed. It's not your turn. Put your shoes on. No ice cream before dinner. Is your homework done? Go to the end of the line. Where's your coat? Put away your art project. 
Can you please correct this? Why did you do that? You lose. Art time is over. No, you can't have a puppy. Please color in the lines. Clean your toys. I would rather play with kids my age. When stress occurs, blood gets shunted to that greedy prehistoric amygdala and away from the prefrontal cortex. This causes a rapid and dramatic loss of cognitive ability, decision making, and judgment. Dude, save some blood for me. My blood spends a lot of time in here. In my brain, I receive an incredibly persuasive signal at any moment I am going to need to run away or fight. In fact, studies have shown that the stress caused by frustration can cause a drop in up to 30 IQ points. This means that the ability to make a calm, rational decision is pretty much impossible. In the ADHD brain, a common dual diagnosis, the prefrontal cortex is often delayed in maturity and growth by up to three years. This means that a kid with ADHD is about two to three years immature and may sometimes behave like a younger child, like I didn't have enough issues. Read on to learn how I react when my fight or flight response is triggered. When I was little, I would get stressed a lot. The urge to run was a bit more of a problem. I even made it out the front door of the school a few times. Nowadays, if I decide to run, I will usually end up hiding on the playground. Poppy! Remember the logic and reasoning part of my brain has decreased blood flow. Therefore, my rational thought and judgment are impaired during fight or flight. Instead of running, my brain might decide to fight instead. This can mean arguing, yelling, or even hitting if I feel threatened. I don't like it when I fight. It's even worse when I rage. These temper tantrums, or rages, have been likened to an emotional seizure. No one can stop a seizure. It has to run its course, and all you can do is protect the seizing person from harm. If I am in a rage, it is important that you treat me with gloved hands. If I am touched, I may lash out. This is the absolute worst time to touch me. I can't be reasoned with in this moment. Remember that prefrontal cortex? It has no blood flow. How to help. Do not engage. If able, allow outbursts to run its course safely. Calm demeanor. Palms out. Non-threatening. Express empathy. Ask, can I do anything to help? Don't reason. Give space, but keep me within eyesight. Don't approach or attempt to move me. Don't touch me. Only if self or others are in danger do you attempt to hold. If I am treated gently and appropriately, I might snap out of it. If I am touched or provoked, a rage can last up to an hour. I need help recognizing when I can turn things around because remember, my brain is two to three years behind. After a rage, blood flow to my prefrontal cortex will start to return. My ability to reason and rationalize slowly comes back. I feel guilty and embarrassed about losing control. I hate myself. I am out of control. Why can't I be normal? Why can't I listen? I don't want to be angry. You don't love me. I am the worst. You hate me. During this time, it's important for me to know that I am still loved and forgiven. I hate thinking that someone is mad at me. I might say that I hate myself, that I wish I was dead, that I'm just a stupid dumb kid. I will be crying and incredibly contrite. I really do feel terrible. I understand that consequences are necessary and appropriate. It helps me to adapt my behavior in the future. In order to be effective, I should be warned of repercussions prior to reaching rage status. Once I get there, reasoning with me is ineffective as I have literally lost control. Having this overactive amygdala and these rages has made my relationships with others, well, pretty challenging. Sometimes I play really well with other kids. Other times it can feel like a roller coaster of emotion. As you can imagine, it has been pretty hard to hang on to friends. This is heartbreaking because I really do adore people. Every stranger I meet is a new potential best friend, and adventures are just waiting to be discovered. Yes! Dad says it's a miracle I haven't been kidnapped yet, and that's why you never lick a banana slug. But with all new friends, soon enough, my hair trigger amygdala kicks in. 
It can get pretty lonely alienating your friends all the time. I wish I could tell them it scares me too, getting angry like that. How to help. Caution with competitive sports. Encourage one-on-one -on -one interactions. Encourage complimenting others. Assign leadership roles. Role play losing or being out. Praise sharing and taking turns. Remember I mentioned the senses being near the amygdala too? Ding, ding, ding. This means my sensory needs can be wonky and that I'm extra sensitive to, well, everything. Music, loud noises, slow cars, textures, cold, heat, grasshoppers, background noise, Brussels sprouts, fast cars, clocks and clicks, silence, smells, wind gusts. You'd think this guy would be exhausted with all that hyperactivity. How to help. Be aware of triggers. When stressed, sensory problems increase. Be aware of increased irritability, which increases sensory sensitivity. Pay attention to cues that senses are overloaded. Encourage good diet and frequent snacking. Protein. And with all that extra activity, of course I have quite a bit of anxiety. I mean, who wouldn't? Having a brain that is constantly scanning the world for threats can make it pretty difficult to overcome my worries, but I try my best. I am learning more techniques and putting them to pr practice every day. I've heard having this chronic irritability brain is similar to what it feels like to live in a war zone. Sounds scary, huh? How to help. Encourage deep breathing. Encourage talking about worries. Allow breaks as needed. Provide comforting space and activity. Sometimes my social perception can be off because my ADHD and hyper amygdala tendencies. I might think others are out to get me when they are not. It makes games rather difficult. Even if someone is offering to help, if I'm extra irritable, I might see them as threatening. Sorry, Poppy, we have a full team. You can't play because we hate you. Tag, you're it. I tagged you because you're bad at this. It's Sarah's turn to go first. Sarah's going to first because Miss S likes her more than me. It's a bummer to always expect the worst. How to help. Reframe situation. How would you feel if... Use relevant personal examples. Explain rules prior to games. Coach and role play being out. Talk, talk, talk. As you can see, I need a lot of help keeping this grouchy amygdala under control. What with my underdeveloped prefrontal cortex from ADHD, friendship challenges and sensory dysfunction, anxiety and social perception issues, I really am quite a feat. Phew, what a mouthful. I need lots of help to be my best self because I'm a kid who's still growing and learning. Here's some things you can do to help me succeed. Positive reinforcements, like all the time. Warnings before transitions. Reminder of rules prior to all games. Use routines and post a clear schedule of the day. Frequent daily reminders before PE and recess of behavior expectations. Leadership roles. I love to feel helpful. Reassurance after I make mistakes. Fierce hugs and encouragement. Empathy and forgiveness. And most importantly, I need understanding. I need empathy. I need you to know that I am struggling with an invisible disability and that my behavior does not always reflect who I am. I need guidance, reassurance, and love while I try to learn to manage this guy. Mom says I am 200% of everything. If I am happy, I will light up from the inside. When I am sad, every cell in my body is in despair. And when I am angry, I feel fire running through my brain. Through it all, I need help managing my emotions, whatever they are, until the sun shines again. Emotions will come and go, and Dad says that nothing lasts forever. Thank you for supporting me on my journey to be my best self. Adios, amygdala!